I work with a psychiatrist. Uh, we sort of that's an ADHD um, specialization clinic. He's wonderful, but he often doesn't. And, and people often don't share as well, right? It's so hard to share about addiction a lot of time. But I think, yeah. and which I loved about your book and which I has been so helpful for me in my clinical practice with people, how do you think about psychiatry often does go to the medication? And in Canada, I'm not sure what it's like in the US, at least in Ontario, I should say, because our healthcare is provincial. I'd say 1%, and maybe I'm, probably off a little bit of psychiatrists actually provide psychotherapy in Ontario. So it's all a diagnosis prescription or at least recommendation for care and then take it to the therapist or take it to the whoever. And that's certainly obviously not ideal, but I think so often clients who have addictions are also on a whole bunch of medications and it just doesn't seem like an effective way to address address the problem. Again, I know things are complicated in an ideal world. How do you see that process of treating addiction, the complications of medication, and perhaps our reflective healthcare system-esque approach to, med to prescribing medications? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, my as a psychiatrist, my ignorance about addiction 20 years ago was completely normative. I was not an outlier, even though I had gone to Stanford Medical School and done a psychiatry residency at Stanford. I had, in fact, graduated with almost no knowledge of how to screen or intervene for substance use disorders, much less you know other types of addictions like gambling or sex. Um, and you're you're you know, the, the Canadian experience mirrors the U.S. experience in the sense that um, more and more psychiatrists who have an MD and have gone to medical school become the pres pill prescribers, right? Fewer and fewer of us are actually doing uh, any really involved psychotherapy. So you have a kind of a perfect storm of psychiatrists not knowing very much about addiction, not knowing how to screen and intervene uh, for the problem, uh, not doing a whole lot of deep dive into a more holistic approach and being tasked essentially with, you know, getting out a prescription pad and, 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 and giving the folks a pill. And this is not to denigrate the psychiatric no, profession no, no. or to other psychiatrists or anything like that, but it is to admit that, you know, when you have a system that's set up that way from the get go, you know, you are going to get the problem of over prescribing uh, where we are prone then even with very good intentions to write for pills that maybe our patients don't need or that might even be harmful for them, especially if they're potentially addictive, like in the realm of opioids, benzodiazepines, and stimulants. Because if I, as a psychiatrist, am ignorant about the addictive potential of those drugs, um, I'm not going to know how to even monitor for whether or not my patient is getting addicted. And what I saw in my career after I had my sort of you know awakening vis-a-vis uh, -vis the need for me to treat addiction is everybody sent those patients my way or they, they ac accidentally ended up in my practice. And of course I could then see that, you know, Dr. Smith was uh, prescribing the stimulants that this person was uh, binging and hoarding or crushing and snorting or whatever it was. You know, I, I saw that Dr. Jones had prescribed the Xanax that this person now was desperately trying to get off and couldn't get off. Um, so uh, we, we need a wholesale shift in, education, um, and also uh, incentives to change mm -hmm. the way that we address uh, mental health care problems because prescribing a pill, although very useful and even life-saving for some patients some of the time, um, basically hasn't been shown to be effective for most patients much of the time. Right. Um, and when we're dealing with addiction, those pills basically don't work very well. So when people are in there actively in their addiction, you know, their Depakote and their Prozac and their stimulants and their, you know, whatever it is, olanzapine, it doesn't work well when people are smoking a lot of pot, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol, snorting cocaine, or probably even when they're shopping and playing video games and masturbating and, you know, gambling and eating and whatever else it is. So that's why we really recommend integrated treatment where we get people from 
the very beginning who are struggling with addictive behaviors, we try to get them into recovery. And I always say to them, it's not that we're going to be ignoring your other mental health care problems. Your ADHD is very important. Your chronic pain is very important. Your depression, your anxiety. But the truth of the matter is we are not going to make much headway in uh, treating those disorders as long as you're still smoking pot, drinking alcohol, uh, snorting cocaine, you know, taking whatever massive amounts of Oxycontin. So we have to do the things together, integrated care. We have to do the treatment in parallel. And what we discover is for some patients, when they get into, you know, robust, sustained recovery, it turns out they don't need all those pills, right? And because, of course, addiction is the great mimic. People can look manic and psychotic when they're intoxicated. They can look depressed and anxious when they're in withdrawal and, and everything in between. Uh, but when people get into sustained recovery, many of them actually, it turns out, don't have bipolar disorder, right? And can get off of their mood stabilizers, which means that they don't have to deal with all the side effects and all of that. So it's super important that we are address these things simultaneously, that we do a better job educating mental health care providers about, you know, the relationship between addiction and other uh, psychiatric comorbidities. It's basically a fear, feed forward cycle. People with psychiatric illness are more likely to get addicted mm -hmm. and people who are addicted are more likely to have psychiatric <laughs> illness. It goes both ways. Indeed it does. 